welcome back to another exciting and powerful episode of Living Real TV. My name is Clara Capano. And I'm Chris Atkins. And we are here to help you boss up and gain clarity in every aspect of your life. So, how you doing, Carissa? I am fantastic today. I'm yeah. doing really, really good. Thank I, you. I am so excited. I think what we're talking about today is all about being aware mm. and being safe. Yeah. Because we know that when we're out there being the badasses that we are, sometimes we may not be aware of our surroundings <laughs> the way that we need to be. Yes. And we can put ourselves yeah. into predicaments that could you know, open up a can of worms for us. So 100%. we're going to be talking about some simple strategies and we're also going to be bringing in some guests to do some demonstrations about how we as strong women can better be aware and protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I'm really yeah. excited to dive into those. Yes, but before we bring on our guests and Absolutely. talk about the importance of being able to protect ourselves no matter what, I'm thinking we need a cocktail from Dion. I think we're going to need to get ourselves <laughs> all, you know, loosened up before we do some demonstrations. Yes. Dion, what are we having today? Oh my God. You know what, ladies, please don't kill me. Today <laughs> we are doing champagne. You know, we're going to continue oh. the celebration of season three. Oh, I love with it. With an so Aperol spritz. Oh yes, I'm always celebrating. Um, so we're going to start out, sorry, I almost did the wrong one. We're going to start out with an ounce of Topo Chico sparkling mineral water. An ounce? An ounce. An ounce. All right. It's going to add extra bubbles with the champagne. Mm-hmm. It's going to add bubbles, but it's also going to dilute a little bit of the Aperol. Okay. Because Aperol, you know, with most of my cocktails, I shake them, and so then that ice gets diluted ever mm -hmm. so slightly. Mm -hmm. And um, so right now we're gonna do one ounce of Aperol. I guess I don't even know what that is. Aperol. It's yumminess in a bottle. Is Aperol it? Aperol is, yeah. is a little bit like a, uh, I, I wanna call it like a bitter, sweet blood orange liqueur. Oh. But it gives it's delicious. us an amazing color. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds like something my husband would love. And we're gonna do an ounce of this guy too. That's one of the things I love is we get to be introduced to all these, you know, nuances and all these new flavors and it's just That's amazing. crazy. He's making me an alcoholic. And no, for, those of you, for those of you playing along at home, again, we will have all these amazing oh, recipes yeah. for these drinks on our website, Living Real TV. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to finish this guy off with a Menage a Trois Prosecco DOC. Mm, I love that brand. Mm -hmm. I can hear the bubbles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So when made correctly, this makes both a great brunch cocktail and a great wine, wine down cocktail to oh, your really? day too. Like, you know, it's really appropriate at any point in the day, especially in those uh, hot summer days. Mm -hmm. uh, this, I mean, you know, take my man card away if you want to. This is my <laughs> drink of choice. We wouldn't take that card no. away from you. We oh, this is so love pretty. it. I love that you can start your day or end your I day. Know. <laughs> or even in between your day. Or have it on the mm -hmm. beach in the, in the middle of the day. <laughs> and as simple as it is, it does have some complexities because you know, you got bubbles, you got Prosecco, you got Aperol, so you got all these flavors, a few different uh, her herbal, herbal uh, notes in the Aperol. So it's really gonna just come across very delicious. Hmm. And you know, I really hope you ladies enjoy this one. Let's continue that celebration. Let's do it. I got the rest of the bottle, don't <laughs> worry about it. Thank you, Dion. <laughs> no worries, no worries, thank you. Oh, well, well cheers, cheers to Defense Badass Women. Yes. Mm. It is so refreshing. <laughs> I could definitely see this at a brunch or like mm -hmm. you said, sitting out on a patio with maybe an ocean in the background. Yes, and yes. That's amazing. Oh, that is yummy and it's so cute. I love the color too. It's my signature <laughs> color. So. It's matching your color. <laughs> I know. Yes. All Goodness. right. Well, we know we're going to be talking about um, safety, defense and all of that today. But before we do that, we got to dive into our question of the day. Yeah, so the question that we, I have for you today, Miss mm -hmm. Carissa, is mm -hmm. what would you say is your greatest gift mm. the greatest gift I give myself or the greatest well, gift I you, give the world yeah that you give the world <laughs> all right well I would have to think let me see okay so I think it's really my authenticity mm -hmm. because a lot of women wear a lot of masks yes and I learned many many years ago to quit people pleasing yeah. to quit comparing myself to others and ultimately I think the benefit 
is the fact that I feel free. Mm -hmm. Like I could literally care less what people say about the lifestyle choices that I make, the mm -hmm. decisions. I mean, when I went through my divorce, I could have let other people's opinions get in the way of me doing that. When mm -hmm. I left my corporate job for to pursue a career as a coach, like I could have let everyone's opinions yeah. really hold me back. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I can honestly say that you know I show up with authenticity, and I always tell people I'm not everyone's cup of tequila. In mm -hmm. fact, I may not be a lot of people's cup of tequila, but that's okay because I. Yeah. Really, I don't need a thousand million followers and friends. I need like a hundred close Claras. Right, so. exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I will say that's one of the things that really attracted me to mm -hmm. want to become friends with you and work with you because I saw that from the start. And I know for me, that was something I fought a lot in my twenties mm -hmm. and probably early thirties. Right. And it wasn't until after I had my big, you know, breakdown with burnout <laughs> that I came to the same conclusion. Yeah. And I noticed that as I get older, you know, I let go more and more. And what I have found is that by showing up authentically, mm -hmm. I actually get more business. Yes. I have better connections yes. at my speakings, at my trainings, because again, the right people start coming to you. Yes. So I think it's a lesson that, you know, we all need to learn is uh, truly the best, the best gift you can give yes. the world is yourself. Yes. So not being afraid I, of you that. You don't need a thousand means, right? Yeah. Like you're beautifully you, like mm -hmm. be you, do you. Like vulnerability yeah. is freaking sexy. Is. Let's just it put is. that out there. Mm -hmm. So what about yeah. your gifts? What about your gifts? Well, along the lines of being authentic, I am authentically sarcastic in pretty much <laughs> everything that I do. So I am going to say my greatest gift could also be my greatest curse, some people might say, is my, my sarcasm. I actually just got a brand new t-shirt and it says sarcasm, it's what I do best. And I think that that again is part of my authenticity. Yeah. It's what makes me real. Um, it, it just again, it, it allows me to just be who I am. And when I try to hide it, again, it doesn't allow me to really be free and to yeah. show up. I, I am what I am and that's what I am and I love being sarcastic and I love my sense of humor and I think that that people really resonate with that too. So let me ask you this because my husband's very sarcastic, my daughter's very sarcastic, but I am not mm -hmm. and sometimes like they can be sarcastic uh -huh. and joking uh -huh. and sometimes it's like you cross the line mm -hmm. and now I'm taking it personal. <laughs> so how do you as the sarcastic one, like do you feel that you just need to feel people out? Like how do you pull back a little bit of sarcasticness when you're feeling like that person is right. really hurt? Yeah, I think definitely you have to feel out your audience. I mean, I'm not okay. going to necessarily be as sarcastic with somebody that I just met sure. um, and I have gotten I have gotten reamed out by my father a couple times for <laughs> going over the line um, with my family members uh -huh. but it's you know it's sort of one of the things as people get to know you they expect it and my mom always laughs and she's always like you can say something and it's like four hours later I'm like hey wait a minute that was kind of mean but it's also funny at the same time so yeah. I think you do you have to pick your spots yeah okay. um, but a lot of times you know it's kind of that fine line of being self-deprecating at the same time so mm. I do it more to myself before mm -hmm. I you know put it on others but I will be honest Sometimes those openings just come and I can't <laughs> resist. I'm like, you just gave me the perfect setup for it. Oh. Um, so you do have to be careful. And as I mentioned, it's my greatest gift. It can also be my greatest, greatest curse. curse. So I, I have learned a few times when I've stepped in it and then you do have to apologize. Yes. But I think, you know, you kind of, you kind of learn your way. And, mm -hmm. Gosh, and sometimes like my husband, sarcastic cop. Mm -hmm. Even worse, y'all, mm -hmm. because now they're like dirty, sarcastic yeah. stuff. And I'm like, what is with? Mm -hmm. I'm like, don't sing that around Sarah, you know, or know. something stupid like that. But, you know, like sarcastic people get sarcastic people. Like him and my best friend Jen mm -hmm. are like uber sarcastic. We were in Vegas and they were just going at it. And it's like banter, fun banter for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm about to cry. Yeah. Like, oh, and I'm not, it's, I'm not even in this mess. Yeah. Like, it's just funny, but there is a fine line. I'm there glad is you a can fine line. <laughs> there is a fine line, but man, when you do it right, oh, it's it brilliant. <laughs> it makes Claire, Clara. It does. I love it. Oh, so, goodness. Yeah. Well, you know, we're here today to talk about how we can be badasses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because sometimes we think we wear the Wonder Woman cape mm -hmm. and we think we're strong and mm -hmm. we've got control over all the areas of mm -hmm. our life. And we like control. We do. But sometimes <laughs> I think we put ourselves in predicaments where we give ourselves a false sense of security, mm -hmm. which actually opens us up mm -hmm. to be victimized. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know we were talking about this when we were putting our lineup together and when we were talking about putting ourselves out there and being strong and being vulnerable at the same time, 
you know, we talked about how can we really work to protect ourselves mm -hmm. as we are growing and stepping out into our greatness. And you shared a story of a time for you when you mm -hmm. were assaulted. Mm -hmm. yeah. So tell us a little bit about yeah. that. Well, um, I was at a chamber function, actually, I'm not going to lie. Um, we were at a chamber event and, you know, you always have cocktails there. And then most of the time your company, especially if you win any awards, it's just a great night, mm -hmm. right? Nobody wants to end the night at nine o'clock when everyone's starting to feel good and the, the juices are flowing and the laughs are happening. So there's always typically like an after party mm -hmm. somewhere, you know, and I remember we went from one chamber function and I had two margaritas. And, you know, because when you are by yourself, I do try and watch that, right? right? Like at the end of the day, I try not to think that I'm stupid and that I'm setting mm -hmm. myself up for anything like this. But, but yeah, so I was like, okay, two drink minimum at this place. And then, you know, and then I'm spreading them out. I've got coffee at mm -hmm. dessert time. Like I'm, I'm thinking I'm doing it really well. Uh, and so we go to the after party, which is just, you know, it's a small chamber, a small town. And so we go to a local bar and I, I was probably there less than an hour and this is where it all gets gray right so mm -hmm. i know something happened in order for this to go kind of gray because i don't remember all the details right. so it definitely was probably drugged or roofied or something like that um, but i ordered one drink at the bar and that's really the last thing i remember mm. until i was bent over on a pool table and i literally i was it, you like kind of come to it and you're like what is even happening, right? Like all of a sudden there were people around and then there weren't and nobody was around. The TV was muted, you know, like mm -hmm. you could see the TV, the bar was still like active, but right. nobody was in it. And, um, you know, I found myself, and this was, this was not that long ago. This okay. was about five years ago. And so it's definitely fresh. Um, and I remember thinking, I, well, I'm strong. I can out muscle this dude. You guys, I've been kickboxing for years, mm -hmm. not to like self-defense, like not to learn like any major strategies, but for the exercise benefit. Right. And like, I was like, you know, I felt strong. I felt confident in myself. And, you know, so like the minute, you know, he's on top of me, you know, I tried to push him off. I thought I could literally muscle this man off of me. And when that didn't work, it was like that fed into mm -hmm. him. Like for some reason, he really liked the oh, fact I that I was fighting right. back mm -hmm. and that I couldn't get control back. Right. And at that point, that's when I just went to the words, right? I was like, please get off me. Please stop. Like, and I'm still foggy because I'm still like, how is this even happening? I was just, my friends were just mm -hmm. here. Like everyone was just around me. And, uh, and, and, you know, like thankfully... I got him enough, I said something enough, I kind of, I must have pushed him something, but I ran to the front door and it was locked. And then to really think, I'm locked in here, mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't even know who else is in here besides this one man, the, you know, clearly the bar owner's in on something like this when a door is locked mm -hmm. in a bar. Um, and, you know, thankfully I remember flicking that deadbolt and I ran out and I don't even know what I left. I just had, you know, my purse mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and I got home and I was so afraid to tell anyone, mm -hmm. you know, and I have, I've been raped before. Like I've been attacked when I was in my teens. So I know the importance of mm -hmm. going and filing a report. I know all of that. Yeah. Right. And so I called my friend, you know, I got home, slept it off. And then in the morning I looked and I had bruises all over my arms and my neck. And that's when I called her and I was just so scared. You know, I was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, this is a small town. No one's going to believe me. Like this is a small business mm -hmm. owner. And she's like, I don't care what you say. I'm taking you. You're going to file a report. And, you know, long story short, nothing really came out of that besides a police report. Kind of my, that worst fear of nothing's really going to happen right. from this um, actually came true, right? That nothing was filed. Um, and I felt ashamed, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, how did this happen to me? I'm so strong. Like yeah. I'm Wonder Woman. Like and I, I feel so good. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, unfortunately so many times we blame ourselves. Yeah. We didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. You know, and you know, we're just showing up again authentically yeah. with good intentions. And again, it's not like you got rip roaring drunk. I mean, you right. had three cocktails. That's right. not really that much over a span of time. A six you hour know? time. But yeah. here it is, is you're blaming yourself. What did mm -hmm. I do wrong? Yeah. Why am I not strong enough? And, right. you know, we have to, again, you know, really work on changing that. And, you know, I know for me, some of my most fearful times, I've been very lucky, mm -hmm. but, you know, I do travel a lot. Mm -hmm. And many times when I'm away, it's going through airports or parking garages. 
before the sun comes up and I'm coming home when the sun goes down. Yeah. And I'm in unfamiliar surroundings, mm -hmm. you know, and so many times people ask me, oh, you know, are you going out, you know, in the evening? And I'm like, I don't always feel safe mm. to do that. I would love yeah. to go and explore. But as a small single woman, you sure. know, even though I like to think I'm somewhat strong too, <laughs> yeah. you know, at five feet tall, you know, it's I sometimes, so much I, 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 I notice that I often hold back from doing mm. things that I really want to do because I'm afraid. Yeah. And so that's why I'm really excited to talk today because I know we're going to get some tips. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be uh, fail safe in all situations, sure. but I think it's going to allow us to get more confidence back. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that when we really feel like we know our surroundings, when we feel confident in who we are, and when we feel confident that we're, again, more aware, people don't want to attack people who feel confident and who feel, yeah. you know, so I think, again, there are... That's why I was so shocked. Yeah. I was like, I'm a badass, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Who's going to mess with me? I know. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited because I, I do think that like, thank goodness I either said something, did something, mm -hmm. but to, that triggered his brain to think this is probably not the right thing. I'm just going to let her go. She won't remember anything anyways. Yeah. Like who knows? Like I don't even remember driving home and I mm -hmm. live 10 miles from that place. Yeah. Um, I was just in such shock, but um, yeah, I just, I that was a pivotal moment for me. Not only, and I'm not going to go into this side of it with my, with my previous marriage, it was a big moment for that marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, but the thing that really got me was I will never put myself in that situation again, mm -hmm. because I think that no matter what lesson, you know, like no matter what happens to us, there's a lesson right. in it. I don't take it back, you know, mm -hmm. cause like I literally, you better believe the next week I was like, I actually need to learn some real tactics now, kickboxing. Mm -hmm. I was like, I really need to learn something to protect myself. Absolutely. Cause at the end of the day, whether I had one cocktail or 10, I got to be able to get away right. at some point. And at the same time, like you said, somebody, it's so easy for somebody to put something in a drink to distract you. And I know that, you know, there's things out there where people, you know, they partner up to, mm -hmm. to do these to, mm -hmm. you know, women and young adults all the time. And, you know, some of the things that I try to do is I always have a check-in with somebody mm -hmm. in the evening so that, you know, they mm -hmm. know where I am That's and, you know, to make sure that they know. Oftentimes, you know, if I'm going and have to walk to my car, again, I'll like maybe text them. Mm -hmm. Even getting into, you know, a ride share. Right. You know, my sisters and I, mm -hmm. oftentimes what we do is we take a screenshot of the car we're getting into with mm -hmm. the license plate just That's in case. Yeah. Again, it doesn't mean that nothing's going to happen, but putting in a lot of these things just so, again, there's always somebody because many times I think when I'm single, if something happens to me, it's going to be hours before anybody <laughs> no knows know. that I don't show up. <laughs> yeah. And so, again, to have yeah. some of these other things in just so that I know that there's somebody looking out for me and some sort of accountability. You yeah, know, to be in there. Tips. And, you know, some of the things I really want to talk about because I, I don't I don't know the right answer, right. but I see so many women, you know, they're out there going for walks or runs, mm -hmm. you know, early mornings, yeah. early evenings with the earbuds in. Mm -hmm. Is that safe? Is that not safe? Well, we I, have an amazing guest we're going to pick their brains on. You know, doing uh... those. Again, <laughs> if I'm walking to my car, is it safer for me to be on the cell phone because I'm talking with someone or does that distract me, sure. you know? So I'm really interested to see because I think those are just some really key things in addition to having some really great strategies and defense tips to do sure. just also some mindset work that we can do yeah yeah some preventative preventative <laughs> mindset work yes love it love it you guys well we are really really excited because we have two phenomenal people and uh, we have Thomas and it was going to be Nicole mm -hmm. and Thomas and Nicole Todd they are entrepreneurs here they own a martial arts business mm -hmm. here in Omaha Nebraska and they are going to be teaching us some amazing amazing little tips and strategies. Mm -hmm. They're also going to give us a fun demo that yes. we can see some like, mm -hmm. I mean, I think like badass, I, I automatically go to Mortal Kombat days, like on the 64. <laughs> that totally mm -hmm. ages me a little bit, but uh, yeah, I'm excited. At least to you're see. not talking about Pong on Atari. <laughs> Let's talk about okay, aging ourselves. Yeah. Let's go back to the 64. Back to the 64. Uh, but no, like I say, let's, let's bring them out. Let's see I a say, demo. Let's what bring do you think? Let's get this demo going. Awesome. awesome. All right. Hi everyone, my name is Thomas Todd. I'm from Championship Martial Arts here in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, I have my assistant with me today, Alyssa Lockhart. Uh, we're here to show you uh, some ways to stay safe and how to be a badass and not be a victim. Um, I'm gonna go over a couple techniques, uh, really basic techniques today. We're gonna give you a live demonstration, but I'm also gonna give you um, which areas on the body to hit. Um, if it's a bigger opponent, 
Um, they're stronger. How can we equalize this? Well, it's soft targets. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I won't talk too much. I'm all about action. So um, when it comes to self-defense, uh, there's four basic targets that I teach when I teach women's uh, self-defense or self-defense in general. The eyes. There's different ways to strike the eyes. And I like to uh, apply pain because it can loosen things up. If someone grabs you, okay, and they're stronger than you, a simple uh, eye gouge or you can strike the nose. So it's the eyes, the nose, throat, and groin. Those are four basic areas, but they're soft targets. No matter how big the attacker is, if you hit those targets appropriately, you should be able to loosen things up and then make it home safe. So we have eye gouging, we have palm striking, um, close quarter, we can use our elbows and knee strikes. When we open up the gap and open up the distance, we can oh, go ahead and throw a kick. We can throw, we can throw a kick and she threw a real kick and I'm glad that didn't hit me. <laughs> but anyway, that's awesome. Okay, so we want to definitely be able to be in a good position of power and a good position of power is having a good stance, okay? So um, go ahead, let's just stand normal. So someone's approaching you and um, you don't know who they are, but you feel a threat and you feel the need to uh, defend yourself. But we don't want you to just start off with, you know, wailing punches or kicks or anything like that. So we want to use a verbal weapon, right? A verbal command to make this person stop. So give me a quick demonstration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a step forward. You don't want me close enough to grab you. So you're going to get in position and I need eye contact and a good verbal boundary. Here we go. Back up. Awesome. Now I want you to note her hands are open. They're not closed looking like she's ready to fight. The rear leg is in the back. We can throw a kick. We can throw a knee. We can throw strikes with the front hand and even elbow strikes. So what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to throw some technique now. Very good. Very good. Okay, let's do that again. And now we're just going to kind of uh, go through some basics. Okay, ready? Back up. All right. Pump strike. Good. Elbow. Good. Knee. Kick. Yeah. Good. Good. Movement. Come on. Movement. 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 Over here. Yep. Kick. Elbow. Good. Palm. Hammer fist. Again. Go. All right. Very good. So, very good. Those techniques, the hammer strike, bridge of the nose, gouging the eyes, the throat into the throat. So the techniques that I show you, some of them, if you were on the ground on your back, you can hit the throat, you can hit the nose, you can gouge the eyes. And so what we want to do if a person, say, they were choking you, or uh, even if someone picked you up and put their arms around you, the throat. So I'll give you a demonstration here. Now we'll do that in slow motion. I grabbed, she came over my head, in front of my throat. She did a frame with her arm and pushed on my throat and stepped back. Now she's in range to throw a strong kick, turn, and boom, you're out of there. You're on your way back to your car running home. So those are some basics. But if you want, if you really want, my suggestion is that everyone learns self-defense, right? Every, everyone. Okay, awesome job. Oh my gosh, that was so amazing. I know, I'm like pumped up. I'm like, I want to go take someone down. <laughs> you feel empowered, yeah. right? Like just seeing that, you feel like, it's just really, it's, it's cool, right? To, mm -hmm. to see that there are people out there that make it their mission in life to go out and help people yeah. be able to defend themselves and mm -hmm. keep, be safe. It's not just like a sport. I mean, we think martial arts, we right. think, I like, I think, you know, like, you know, like, Kid yeah, Bruce Lee. Yeah. Like, I'm going, like, I love all that stuff, you guys. Yeah. But we are so blessed to have such an amazing, you know, opportunity to be able to bring on mm -hmm. Todd and Nicole. Yes. And they are owners of a local business. And mm -hmm. I don't want to mess this up, but it's Martial Arts Champion. Championship Martial Arts. Thank there you. you had it all in there. <laughs> Championship Martial Arts. It's mm -hmm. their dojo. And they are teaching, obviously, self-defense classes. We're going to learn everything that they actually do. I'm not mm -hmm. just going to tell you about it. Um, but we're so excited to have you here. Welcome yes. to Living Real. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for the opportunity. That demo. Yeah. Now, the demo was not you, Nicole. Who was it? No, the demo was my daughter, Alyssa. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's right. actually worked there longer than me. Uh -huh. She's taught 
<laughs> self-defense, mm -hmm. um, karate, and now she's our program director. Oh, that's so. fantastic. Yeah. I love that it's a yeah. family affair. That's yes. wonderful. Yes. And she yeah. brought her little thing, her little daughter back she there. She did. So. She mm -hmm. has two beautiful little girls. And that's so her, cool. Her daughter with us today is a black belt in Little Dragon. Oh, my so. God. Can you believe it? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I was sitting there talking to her back there, and I'm like, don't kick my butt. Okay? I know. Like, yeah. She was just a little cute thing, I and know. you know, going to be growing up to be some powerhouse powerhouse babe. Absolutely. That's what we do. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, go ahead. Say, tell us a little bit about you know your story. How long have you been in business? What was really your driving force behind creating your business? Awesome. Well, um, it's, it's, our, it's my person, my 20th year oh, wow. um, mm -hmm. started in, in North Omaha because there were no martial arts studios there, and I wanted to you know, make sure that there was something for uh, that part of the community so they can uh, learn self-defense. Mm -hmm. so, I, I, so I went from there and kind of went around and subleased a little bit here and there, and finally we found our home. Mm -hmm. uh, it's right on 88th and Blondo. We've been okay. there since okay. uh, 2005. Wow. Nice. So a lot has happened. We've trained a lot of people, a lot of, uh, a lot of self-defense. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. always yes. a need uh, for self-defense. And, and when you say self-defense, it's a broad brush. Mm -hmm. There's all different styles. So we teach uh, you know, kids martial arts, but then we also do specialized training like women's mm -hmm. self-defense. Yes. So I've taught hundreds of classes, and, and what you so see is just a demonstration. So do corporations and organizations hire you to come in and teach their women? Like, yes. yes. Okay. I think that's amazing. Okay. We do, a, we yes. do yes. a lot of stuff for colleges mm -hmm. and just small sororities, groups. Mm -hmm. um, lots of sororities, especially at Creighton. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, we've taught Smart. a lot of um, free self-defense classes mm -hmm. for teachers. So different schools have called mm -hmm. us, and we like to do um, community projects yeah. like that yeah. Yeah. so that's um, one way that he can give back to the community is yeah. by yeah. by doing that and then a lot lot of mother-daughter classes mm -hmm. which is a lot of fun mm -hmm. um, Claire, let's do one I know <laughs> we should I mean not mother-daughter <laughs> like I know <laughs> we're in town next we have to come yes. back and do that oh, and I think you totally again, do I just think it's so important and I love the fact that you are really embracing or rather that the community is embracing you yes because it's you know we have to be able to take care of ourselves. So yes. in our second half of the show, we're going to be diving into more of these strategies and some of the things that can keep us more aware. So, you know, come on back and sit down for the second half with us as we dive deeper into taking care of ourselves, building confidence, and going into some of the best practices in self-defense. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Clara Capano with Capano Speaking and Training, and I am here to get you clarity. As the strategist for the smart women, I've spent over 20 years working with women in business, helping them to recreate what success looks like for them, to get them off that hamster wheel, and to get them into running a purpose-driven business. When you work with me, you're going to find real strategies that are going to help you gain immediate traction in both your personal and professional life. So follow me and find out all you need to get you clarity at claracapano.com. Well, welcome back. If you missed the first part of today's episode, right? Because you're kind of catching this on the second half. Where we're going to dive into strategies on how women can really stand up for themselves and, and show like, hey, don't mess with me today, buddy. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, we just got some watching an amazing demo today we have you know we brought back uh todd or nicole and um thomas, thomas. thank you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nicole and thomas todd and they are experts in self-defense teaching self-defense and martial arts of course but we, we heard a little bit about the business right which is great we we know where you're where you're at but i want to know the why because mm -hmm. obviously you got into it for some reason like yes. what got you into this whole <laughs> arena <laughs> well Okay. Well, as a kid, I was bullied, and there's a lot mm. of people, okay. a lot of kids nowadays that, that, that get bullied. So I got interested in martial arts. I wasn't the biggest guy, you know what I mean? But I found that martial arts was a way to empower myself and give me that confidence. And so when I opened my business, I was like, well, you know, this is a way that I can give back and, and, and share what I learned to the next person so that they can feel confident and be empowered mm. and it you know 20 years later here we are and, yeah. you didn't come out like 
with a belt around your waist and you know just like kicking punches. I mean, no. so you're just like a normal human. You were yeah. bullied. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was bullied. Yeah, and, and I think that that's so common. I mean, especially now, whether mm -hmm. it's cyberbullying or you know in person. Yeah. I think so many kids or even people in the workplace. Yeah. And I think it is a great way even just to work on the mindset of building that internal confidence yes. to, that can you know, translate. Definitely. I, I just I was working with a, a, a lady, she calls, because we get a lot of just uh, random people that call, they wanna do self-defense. And her story was basically, there was someone that she hasn't seen for 15 years and they're gonna be showing back up in the community mm. and she's afraid. Mm. And so mm -hmm. she's done two private private one-on-ones and she left just feeling great about she said her confidence level everything just went up just knowing what to do some people right. had no clue it's what, huge. What to it do. is huge yeah. so and Nicole I'd love to hear your side of it how long have you been a part of the company and what has it really done for you as a woman business owner um, so my daughter and my son and I started training there probably about 10 years ago mm -hmm. And we started in kickboxing and my son started in the Taekwondo classes at the time. Um, and he, it was life changing for mm -hmm. my son. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't bullied, but he went to a private school where he was very accepted, but he had a lot of anxiety, like had trouble just mm -hmm. functioning, um, you know, social anxiety, things like that. And it really, the confidence that it gave him was life changing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I guess made me start working there full time, which mm -hmm. led to then a relationship. Our relationship, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but my, like I said, my daughter started teaching kickboxing there. Um, I started doing classes. It was very empowering for me. I worked at the men's prison for 15 mm -hmm. years wow. at that time. And, um, yes. He wasn't wow. very thoughtful. Was that yeah, joke? Yeah, like, but, oh my gosh! <laughs> I came to him for self-defense okay. because yeah. um, we get training in the prison, but it's not um, the next level practical. Mm -hmm. um, it's like pressure point control, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking I'm five five, and these guys are six foot or taller, yeah. and they lift weights all day. Bigger, yeah. right. And if someone gets upset with me because I was I'm a counselor, sure. so. You know, I'm one-on-one -on -one or one-on-20 okay. on mm -hmm. people in a class, and what am I going to do? So uh, I started doing private lessons with him and found out that I'm a lot stronger and more capable of doing things. Mm -hmm. I think he thought I was crazy when we met because I was like, choke me harder. I want to make <laughs> sure it works, you know? And mm -hmm. it really was just it super me. important for me that I really mm -hmm. knew what I was learning would work on someone. Yeah. And um, I think that's what brought me into it uh, full time mm -hmm. because it was just it was so awesome to to feel that confidence yeah. and I wanted other people to experience that yeah. they help them find their strong she, she loves to yeah. help people yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you I can love tell. That. that's my why so I we mentioned confidence a mm -hmm. lot and confidence to me is is a trait you can build right it's a habit you can form mm -hmm. um, but not everyone feels you know confident like I thought I felt confident I mean I know you guys heard my a little bit of my story um, so it's like, I felt confidence in myself, but obviously I still showed up in a world like, I think I could still probably take advantage of this woman. So mm -hmm. what are some strategies for women specifically, because that is who's really watching today. What are some strategies that can help build their confidence? Um, you know, because not one session is not going to, they're not going to be like, okay, I'm yeah. ready to go yeah. now, right? right? So what are some strategies for women? Well, I'm going to let him talk about that, but I want to say something first, yes, if I can. Mm -hmm. um, first, I want people to just know that there's terrible people in the world mm -hmm. and people that will take advantage of mm -hmm. an amazing person like mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And it's not that you weren't prepared or you're not strong, it's that they literally took advantage of you, put you in a situation that you couldn't defend yourself right. because you were drugged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, one to, and I know you've done this because you can talk about it, but work through the fact that it's not your fault. There's nothing right. mm -hmm. that you could have done to prevent that situation from right. happening. Because I think as women, a lot of times we feel like it was our fault. What could mm -hmm. we have done differently? If I only had one less drink, no, mm -hmm. you should live your life. It's the things that Tommy teaches um, in his classes we hope become muscle memory if you're in a situation where, God forbid, you need to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. So. Right. Uh, he always says, you know, it's better to know it and not need it right. than to need it and not 
know it. Absolutely. So, it would have been nice, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yep. and, and so he does scenario training with different things. Mm. And so if, if we just hope that if something like that happens to someone, um, that light bulb will come on. I remember him telling me this and bam, you know, mm -hmm. but I'll let you talk a little bit more about that. Yes, yeah. well, first, <clears throat> first of all, I would say um, everyone needs martial arts training, mm. like every single person. It's a daily dose of M.A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Everybody needs some, some type of martial arts training. Like I said, I train a lot of, a lot of young ladies that are going to go abroad or go off to college in another mm -hmm. state and their parents want them to at least have, uh, uh, you know, some basic training. But when it comes to confidence, right, um, confidence is, is attained through learning how to be, how to have aggression. Right. So when we strike, punch, kick, elbow, those are aggressive uh, movements. So mm -hmm. the more we get proficient with that, the more confident we become. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like someone that lifts weights and they get stronger and stronger. I mean, someone that lifts weights, they get stronger the longer, the more that they do it. So I would say um, one of you want to have different uh, uh, um, levels of uh, of defense. Right. So you mm -hmm. want to be aware first. Okay. Right. So we were talking a little bit earlier about should you have your phone or yeah. should you not have your phone? Sure, it's okay to have your phone, but if you're going from the building to your car, are, are you fixated on the phone mm -hmm. and not on your surroundings? So I would always, always scan the area and make sure you're in a safe place, get in your car, lock the car, right? There's a lot of different things that I would do for safety. If someone approaches you, your eye contact shows them that you're confident. Mm -hmm. If you don't look them in the eye, and you don't look confident, you're an easy target for that person. Okay. So that's, that's huge. Um, if you were on the phone, say, yes, honey, I'm on my way home right now. Even if there's no one on the phone, yeah. mm. the attacker doesn't know that you're not talking to someone and saying, hey, this person is wearing black pants, a gray shirt, and a, and a red hat. Like, they, they don't I know love that. that but you're bluffing, but they don't know that. But then the next line of defense is, is, is to have that safety space. Because if someone can get close enough to grab you, they can take you, yes. they can strike right. you, they can harm you. So you wanna keep that, that gap open between you and that person where you can defend yourself. And then if someone approaches you, um, you wanna look for a secondary attacker. Maybe they have a friend mm. behind you. Maybe there's a curb that you might trip over. So there's a lot of scenarios before you can actually uh, defend yourself. You wanna make sure that you're in a, in a position of power. But number one, eye contact. Number two, a strong voice. Cause we don't want you to fight. Right. I want you to have the verbal, verbal fight. Like to your daughter. Ex exactly, when off. we say back mm -hmm. off, mm -hmm. you're drawing attention and the attackers are gonna be like, well, She's a that. badass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and not and not afraid. Like you know, exactly. I I see you, I recognize you, and this is not yeah. okay. I'll and call, laying I'll that call. down. And I think a lot of people, they they might go into their self talk of, I don't want to assume, I don't want to hurt their feelings. You know, yeah, maybe right. they're just a normal person, yes. and yeah. I don't want to say anything. Mm -hmm. But isn't it better to err on the side of caution? Yeah, yes. go with your gut. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm. and I think um, one of the things that stuck out to me most when I first saw you do your actual self-defense class was determining what the person wants. Yep. So if they get if they get like too close to you where you're mm -hmm. uncomfortable, like where Alyssa said, back off. And usually we say that's at about six to 10 feet. Like if someone gets closer than that, mm -hmm. I mean, you're limiting what weapons, you know, what your fist, sure. your yeah. kick, whatever you're gonna mm -hmm. use to defend yourself, you're limiting what you can use the closer they get. So um, talk a little bit about how you tell people to determine what they want. Yeah, I mean, because they may want a dollar, but it depends. Are you, are you, are you, yeah. you know, because there's a lot of people yeah, that, that don't are. have. So are you in a position where you could give them money, but you're not, you're not in a good place? So I wouldn't offer cash. If you're with your friends, a group of friends and someone, and you felt more safe, definitely I would do it. Now, your valuables, right? Mm -hmm. Those are tangibles. They can be replaced, yeah. right? So I would say if you're walking to your car and someone says, hey, I want your purse, right? So, and your car's here, right? And they're in front of you. I would, I would definitely give them whatever they want and I would toss it in the opposite direction. Oh, wow. Right? That's a really good that one. That is smart. Toss, so good. <laughs> hopefully you didn't toss your keys yeah. Right? Yeah. in there. So honestly, from your safe zone, you could be in the mall and your car's in 
the parking garage, mm -hmm. which I wouldn't suggest. Okay. If it's if you're going in there and it's light and then you're in there for an hour and it's dark. Mm -hmm. So some of the stuff you it, it's preventative. You just have to think ahead, right? So, but if you, if you were in that scenario, um, and someone approached you and they and you know from a distance what they want, <clears throat> toss it away from the direction that you need to go. Mm -hmm. And I ask women a lot of times, we'll role play, and I'm like, okay, hold this and pretend like it's your uh, uh, your Louis Vuitton purse that you just got. <laughs> And I've had a woman, and, and I play like the bad guy, and I approach her, and she says, no, I'm not going to give you my purse. Mm -hmm. So, no, your life right. is not worth that purse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? right. So, and it just, just be super aware, right? And if you throw your confident. purse, yeah. and they don't go after the purse, it's time to fight. obviously they didn't want the purse. Right. Mm -hmm. So then, you then know, you mentally get, you have to prepare to fight exactly. and get away because yeah. you know at that point what they want. Yeah. So. And, Thomas, just going back for a moment, you know, the idea of have your keys ready. Yes. You know, so again, so if you do have to throw your purse, you still have your keys on you. Mm -hmm. um, and I be a weapon. And that was Mine say, like oh, a big thing. I was yeah. always told to like kind of carry my <laughs> That's key what I do. and to use that as a potential weapon too. Anything yep. can be a, anything can, a pencil. Just These about babies. Mm -hmm. those oh, those are amazing, are amazing, <laughs> amazing <laughs> weapons. Nope, Ladies, nope. we have a weapon on so us. So we need as to go buy more shoes. As, as, long, as long as you can walk in them. <laughs> yes. Because I would be a target if I wore those. I could probably run a little bit, but you're right. You're, instead of get away, right? Yeah. Push yeah. them enough to make the space. Yeah. If I had nothing else, whip the sucker off. Bam. Yeah. 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 Your body is a weapon too. Yeah. So I, tra I train you how to use your body like a weapon. You know, your voice is first. Mm -hmm. Your eyes and your voice, and then positioning. So we want to be in a position of power. That stance that Alyssa mm -hmm. did is a position of power. If you stand with your feet, you know, parallel, and you're just standing normally, you can get pushed off balance. Pushed but mm -hmm. you're you're basically putting the leg back and the hands up. Everything's cocked, ready to go. Yeah. Or you can kick and and, and strike and things. like Exactly that. like kickboxing. Mm -hmm. Right. That's it. Yeah. Literally what. Yeah. And trust what it me, is. I thought yeah. about that. But this gentleman, you know, because I, I I ended up knowing him right at the end of the day. It's a small town community, oh. and um, you know, he was a gym goer, so he was mm -hmm. much stronger than me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do you suggest if? It, and it very it often is. It's you know. We're not as large as man, you know, we don't have the muscles as a man. Like at the end of the day, I couldn't outpower him and right, I realized right. that very quickly. Right. So what so, would some suggestion so be? So different scenarios. So there's scenarios standing up, there's scenarios where you're on the ground. So we, I, I, I the, the big four is what mm -hmm. I call it, the eyes, the nose, the throat, groin. Mm -hmm. So you got, you rake the eyes, you have DNA under your nails, mm, okay. right? So you're picking up evidence. He's gonna walk around with a lot of evidence and be easy. You want, mm -hmm. and I also want to say that you want to be a good witness, right? Mm. Like if the police come after something happened, this is the direction they went. This is the car. He had he had a lot of hair, whatever. You want to have all that. But on your back, I would go for the groin if if your hand is free to do that. The throat, the nose, and the eyes. On your back, can you throw a hammer strike to the nose? So when, when you get hit in the nose, Ugh. it can break. Oh my it gosh, it is so sensitive. Your eyes mm -hmm. are blurry. So like I said, and then I would, I would bridge up. I would put the bottom of my feet on the ground and bridge up and mm -hmm. knock this person off mm -hmm. of you, if possible. Okay. There's different scenarios. There's a scenario where they're, I say this, they're in between your legs or their knees on the outside mm -hmm. of your hips. Mm -hmm. So there's different scenarios and there's a way out of every. What about if they're behind you? If they're behind you, we can headbutt with the back of our head. If, okay. if, if a person has your arms pent, you can grab the groin, you can use the heels and mm -hmm. stomp the foot okay. and back elbow. So there's, there's different things. If you can get to a finger, pry the finger and break. Okay. Right. So no matter so how big things. they are, the things, yeah. there's, it's the little little things that count, right? Yeah. So like the eyes and the nose and throat growing, fingers, like whatever it, whatever it takes to, let's say if someone was behind you and I got free and I turned around, now I can add other uh, combatives, mm -hmm. which would be kicks and knees and things like that. And basically just fight like crazy. Yeah. I would say mm -hmm. you got to fight, fight, fight until they're, until they're immobilized and mm -hmm. they can't come after you. And then you take off. And right. do as m much as you can to make noise and draw attention. I was attention gonna say, yeah, and, draw you know. attention and yeah. Yeah. sex trafficking. Let me go to there, you know, because that is really big, right? It's yes. big. It's yeah. everywhere. 
Uh, and typically you're thrown into like something in the back or you know whatnot. So if you're in a car and you're in a back seat, like is there anything that you can do, obviously besides a driver, but I just don't know. I'm just trying to think of a situation mm -hmm. like that because mm -hmm. as women, we get in a back seat so often right. um, and or, or a front seat and there's people behind us. Mm -hmm. So I just don't know how to defend ourselves in a car. So you're saying if someone tossed you in the back of a car mm -hmm. and started taking off. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so here's the thing that I, um, I mean, I, that I tell people, right? So let's just say someone pulled up to you. You were walking down the street and someone pulled up to you and they had a gun mm -hmm. and they said, get in my car. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get in the car. Generally, people aren't going to shoot you on the spot. Your, your chances of survival are very slim getting in that mm -hmm. car. So don't get in the car. Never, Try everything. everything, yeah. everything so else. there's okay. some preventative stuff. If you, were, yeah. if you ended up in the car, you were in the back seat, you were going to have to fight tooth the nail. I would do whatever it took okay. to get that car stopped, whether you had to grab their hair or you're fighting, you're Literally. striking, you're choking, whatever it takes, right? You never get in the trunk. You never get, get in. And then use your feet. Yeah. Right? You can sit back and kick. You can do up kicks. But Women's legs are so much stronger. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in, in hips. Mm -hmm. So like when we talk about throwing techniques, if you mm -hmm. get your hip in kickboxing, into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. If you get your hips into it, it's 10 times stronger than just yeah. throwing a regular right. technique, not moving, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I think remembering that our legs are probably our best weapon. Yes. Um, he'll talk about if you're sitting in a car, like if it's him and I, you know, and, and he's, well, I would be driving, so you get to demonstrate, but mm -hmm. but turning to the side and use your leg. I mean, it's very mm -hmm. small mm -hmm. space here, but yeah. you know, the, if he, if I'm, I'm the big strong guy yeah. and he's over here trying to muscle, you know, me with, with my strength, right. yeah. isn't gonna be very, mm -hmm. um, beneficial. Yeah, right. I'm not going to probably get what I want. I'm probably just going to get hit. Mm -hmm. So, but if I turn around, I'm pulling my, my face right away from the danger and I'm using my legs and there's not a lot when someone's driving that they can do to defend against some pretty right. strong legs. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't care like how much or how little you work out, your legs are strong. strong. Yeah. So, yeah, um, so and true. a lot of time what happens, I think when women are in a dangerous situation, um, is they get so scared that mm -hmm. they freeze and mm -hmm. they they don't and a lot of times it's not that they don't, aren't confident or they're not um, even prepared but mm -hmm. it's a lot of times we don't know what to do or we're right. not confident in our ability to protect yeah. ourselves yeah, and that's what you thought oh gun I'm getting yeah. in the car and yeah. you're like no, no, no don't no. get in the car yeah. Yeah. but that would have been the panic mode okay no. I'll get in the car I'll yeah. do whatever you want no. just don't hurt me but I think that's where the muscle memory that you talked about comes in is that even though you might be fearful in the moment, as you should be, right. the memory is going to be there. And so you're going to go into that because right. instinctually you already have the skill sets. Right. But you got to have the skill sets. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And repetition yeah. is the mother of all learning. Mm -hmm. So the more, yeah. the more you can engage in self-defense is a workout. Mm -hmm. When women come to, to learn self-defense, they're like, wow, I got to work on it. I actually lost 20 pounds yeah. and I know how to defend myself. Well, and, I mean, we're doing a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, uh, they, you know, it's, a, it's like normally a 75 minute, so an hour and 15 okay. minute class. And a lot of people are like, what am I going to learn in an hour class that mm. I can? I laugh. But mm -hmm. it's incredible because if you only have the opportunity to do an hour class, you're so much smarter and stronger self-defense yeah. wise than you were before yeah. you walked in An the hour, door. Yeah. So it, it's very beneficial if you've never done it to just do one class yep. because they do, he doesn't teach a lot. You don't have to be a black belt. Mm -hmm. It's simple techniques that you can use, you know, if you need to. And yeah. you practice so many times that that muscle memory develops. And if you can do more, that's amazing. Like sure. we do have people do more classes, sure. but the one is a really good, yeah place to start and it gives you a nice solid foundation. Yeah. I know that when my son who's 17 now when he was younger, I, you know, I actually hosted a course and it was all about sort of stranger danger and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was really amazing in, you know, that short bit of time. And it was really maybe about four or five moves, but that we went through them several mm -hmm. times. Yes. And to be able to again, you know, make kids more aware and the, the biggest thing is the surroundings. And yes. I think it's again taking that scan because mm -hmm. 
as a kid, you oftentimes think you're invincible, yes. and so many of them are on the phone right now or oh, yeah, the earbuds. This is in. what I see. Oh, you know? yeah. yeah. This is what mm -hmm. I see at all. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm like, hello, I just mm -hmm. hit you. I almost hit you in my car. Right. And I'm not yeah. even. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. Look up. Look exactly. Up. Yeah. yeah. No, everywhere. I mean, I see it at the airports I go to. I mean, everybody has Everybody's earbuds in happy. looking at the phone. And again, it's just you're not aware right. and you're you're putting yourself in a position where somebody whether it's a pickpocket or whatever i mean mm. you know and it's okay obviously it's okay to use your phone but here, here's the thing talk about level 10. <sighs> sorry level 10. level 10 <laughs> that's when that bell goes off in your head <laughs> like that and you are you know you're in the grocery store you're looking for eggs you're like okay mm -hmm. so level 10 is when you're when you're at home you're in your safe zone you know your door is locked you have a gate, whatever. Your door's locked. People aren't just gonna come in, but once we get out in the community, people let their guards down, mm -hmm. and then they're distracted to boot. So they're, they're distracted, their guards are down, and anything can happen. I wanna tell you that the, uh, the people that are out there committing these crimes, they are looking for an easy target. Mm -hmm. So the less you make yourself an easy okay. target. So if you're going from the grocery store to your car, do you really have to text message in between mm -hmm. those two places, you know, before you can lock your door? You know, get in your car, pull off the lot, then check your text message. Mm -hmm. What if someone was waiting for anyone in that parking lot mm -hmm. not to be focused, and then you didn't lock your door, and here you are, you put your groceries in, or you're putting your child in a, in, mm -hmm. in a seat mm -hmm. in the back, uh, you know, in a baby seat in the back, and, and then you're bent over, no one knows, you know, what's behind them and then all of a sudden someone approaches you so you know when you're out in the community level 10 you know it i'm in level 10 I, in my business I, i'm a black belt my front door is locked mm -hmm. yeah if you if you come in non-business hours i'm in there but my front door's locked okay. that's just a level of safety for me mm -hmm. so you get in your car lock the door right pull off get to a safe spot check thing I so always it's like quickly things. look back because I always mm -hmm. like I have a fear that someone's already in, in there. Yes. I have a bad yeah. habit of not locking mm -hmm. a car yeah. outside yeah. and yeah. I'm just like, but I do look, but yeah, it's that paranoia, mm -hmm. but I'm like, Park, okay, look Parking and garages, lock. for me, when I teach, or no, no, if you, if you even if it's raining, park outside, yeah. you, okay. Know, okay. you know, yeah. just, I mean, every, every little thing will add up to a little bit more safety for you. you yeah. Know? Um, I love that. Level yeah. 10. Yeah. Hashtag level 10. Hashtag level 10. Well, and a couple other things, um, like you said looking behind you all the time. I mean, there's such thing as a healthy level of paranoia. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so making sure like if you're in a restaurant, he always sits with his back to the door mm -hmm. so he can mm -hmm. see the door. Mm -hmm. um, always knowing where the exits are. So mm -hmm. if something were to happen and you needed to escape, you'd know where to go. Mm -hmm. um, simple things like that, I think, can yes. help us be yeah, safe. Yeah, my husband's in security and he always does that. He's like, mm -hmm. or when we're walking, he'll put me on the inside of the yes. street yes. instead of the mm -hmm. outside. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He's like, put your purse on the inside of the mm -hmm. couple. And I'm like, hey, yeah. And being be Italian, I thought just, you know, looking at the door, not putting your back, I thought that was just an Italian mob thing that, you know, <laughs> no, 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 trickled no, down through see. me. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I always, I always like Good to, things, <laughs> I always like to know when I go into any place where the exits are, and I'm an active shooter mm -hmm. instructor too. I didn't really mention that, but yes, that is one of the things that we do. But whenever you're in a place, you can see who's coming in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. right? There's a lot of crazy stuff going on out there, but that's a whole nother, whole nother uh, ball, ball of wax. But yeah. Well, with you, that though, yeah. I, there is so much you could be teaching us, and yeah. I want you. I want people literally to whether it's your dojo or it's a different any, one. It doesn't yeah, matter. You're saying get your daily dose of yeah. martial arts, mm -hmm. learn one class, and then you'll love it. And you'll probably take two, three, exactly. four, five. Mm -hmm. It'll build that confidence up. Uh, you know, I just I'm so I'm so grateful eh, to yes. have you on our show Thank to you. teach our yeah. ladies, yeah. and grateful yeah. for what you do for the community and Thank making you. people more aware of it, and you know, creating. Um, Sort of an open door where people can come and just feel safer for themselves yeah. for their families and yeah. if i can say really quick it's great for kids too yes mm -hmm. so our kids program is based on self-defense love, love, so, love that all right yes, it's a family affair get your yes. family involved yes. protect yourself and be safe don't be stupid yes. uh with all of that <laughs> um thank you so much for joining us today for another powerful episode of living real tv thank you so much for watching and uh i'm carissa atkins i'm clara capano and we hope you Stay living real.